Okay, quiz time. What's wrong with this light? Well, uh, it's not working. Uh, this one's cheerfully powered up, but uh, this LED light bulb is no longer working. So let's uh, tear it apart and see why not. Okay, well, I took the defective bulb apart. Of course, you can see here's the emitter array. Here's the uh, AC to DC converter, and of course, then a plug back to the wall. Standard YouTube disclaimer. Uh, it's uh, live voltage, uh, to fairly high voltage. So caution uh, is definitely warranted. Uh, the first question, of course, is there 115 volts coming into the bulb? And uh, the answer is yes, of course. So then you go off to the uh, bridge rectifier and uh, question whether it's producing a DC voltage. It is. And the next question, of course, is uh, is there an output voltage on the bulb uh, emitter array? It looks like it's producing about 22 volts DC. So the AC-DC converter appears to be producing a DC voltage, so maybe it's the emitter. So I'll take the uh, emitter off, uh, unsolder it, and power it through a separate lab power supply. Okay, well let's see which uh, LEDs failed here. Uh, obviously that one's uh, working just fine. And that one's just fine. So probably this is a suspect LED. Yes, sure enough, I mean it looks like an LED has uh, failed itself on the assembly. So let's take it apart and see what's wrong with it. Okay, well here's some interesting pictures. Uh, first one up is the actual component. Uh, those uh, golden little lines that are being pointed to are the bond wires. They connect the uh, package uh, to the actual die. So there's two failures that uh, I would expect here. Either the bond wire is separated from the uh, LED or the LED itself, the actual die, has become defective. So um, in a commercial setting you'd probably selectively and de-encapsulate the top here, but uh, that's kind of tricky in a home workshop. So I just peeled the uh, the phosphor and the little rubberized coating off. It comes off quite nicely. Uh, it, of course, pulls the bond wires with it. Uh, but uh, the speculation I have is if I can power up the die separately, uh, I can prove whether or not uh, it was the die that failed or the bond wires. So my next challenge here is to actually get a probe onto this die. Um, and it is a tiny die. It's less than a millimeter on a square or so. Um, uh, normally, again, you'd turn to some commercial tools called a micro-positioner, but uh, they're worth a couple thousand bucks a shot, and again, not sort of home workshop level, but in the spirit of what can you do, um, I've got a couple sewing needles. Um, now, here's another picture, actually. I put the sewing needle uh, next to the bond pad, and you can see it's absolutely huge. Um, the sewing needle simply is too large, but uh, another picture here, uh, some... 600 grit sandpaper onto a ceramic plate uh, which is nice and flat and I'm able to burnish up the actual uh, needle to be really really sharp uh, sharp enough to actually be an adequate probe for a wafer level probing next thing is to create some probe holders and for that I'm going to turn to this uh, open beam rail system I have a big box of it and playing with it it's quite a neat little product um, I need to hold the needle so what I'll do is I'll I like, drill a hole into the side of the rail and then I'll tap the end of the rail and I'll put a set screw in and that'll hold the needle actually surprisingly well and the other next thing I need to do is create basically a uh, t-shape for stability so and uh, you can see I just simply use the kits the t brackets and they work fine and then from that I connect a power supply onto it so uh, there you have actually a item which is capable of probing Wafers, um, ridiculous as it might sound. Uh, the next picture is here. I'm actually going to start a little bit of movie because it actually is hard to explain this story without a bit of a motion picture. Okay, so it's kind of hard to get a sense of how small this probing is. Uh, I have a camera here with uh, some uh, macro tubes on it, essentially providing me the ability to look at the die. Um, it is so small. And uh, there, of course, you can see the little probes, and of course, below that, the actual die, uh, and then the little backlight there providing some illumination. Okay, well, this has been a bit of fun. I'm actually successfully able to probe this die. I got the two uh, needles touching the uh, bonding points for the die, and if I turn the light uh, on through the power supply here, uh, it produces some uh, blue light, and of course, that would be eventually converted to white light with the phosphor that's been peeled off. Uh, so it proves the, that the failure was probably on the bonding wires between the package and the die, because the die is actually still functional. So there you go. I figured out why this little LED light bulb failed, and I had a little bit of fun here creating some uh, wafer-level probes in my workshop.